Eager to find out more about this less familiar history, Anthony sends Cindy and me to Belleville, to the museum inside the Clara Moss Medical Center, where we're met by Dr. Mary Ellen Klein, the hospital's president and CEO. We took a quiz with our <laughs> staff historian, Anthony Bernard, and let's just say we got the Clara Moss question wrong. <laughs> Neither one of us knew too much, I gotta be honest with you. So we thought what better way than to come here and find out a little bit more about her backstory and about the hospital. Terrific, I think that's a great place to start and we're happy to answer any questions that you have and give you a little bit about her history and what's made her famous. Well, since we're in the museum, let's talk about her the early years. What can you tell us about those early years? Clara Moss is a native of New Jersey, born in East Orange. She came from a very, very poor family, and she, as the eldest sibling, needed to be able to provide for her family. Already a mother's helper, the nursing profession piqued Clara's interest. In turn, she applied to the nurse's school at Newark's German Hospital. Although Clara was still a teenager at the time, the admissions committee relaxed the minimum age requirement, which was 20, because she exhibited unique qualifications. They were really looking for was somebody who was plain, unadored, and could work in drudgery. She also worked in the Newark Orphan Asylum, and she had that skill set of learning how to care for people. Clara Moss quickly excelled, mastering new ideas in patient care, introduced to her by the same team that schooled another famous nurse. So there's a direct line between Florence Nightingale and... Yes, and Clara, that she was able to get the same skill set that Florence Nightingale would have had, and that really is focusing on preventing infection, spread of infection, disease, hand washing... So cleanliness. Cleanliness being close to godliness. Clara Moss displayed such exceptional abilities that by age 21, she was promoted to head nurse at the Newark German Hospital. However, her desire to ease pain and suffering couldn't be contained by the walls of one hospital. As the U.S. and Spain went to war in 1898, Clara Moss decided to take her skills where they were needed most. She joined the army, sort of. She wanted to sign up for the war and go enlist as a nurse, but you were not allowed to enlist as a nurse, so she had to join the war and the army as a contracted nurse. So she found a back door to get in, and she really wanted to help the soldiers and heal them so that they could carry on with what they needed to do for the country. Clara spent a great deal of time caring for soldiers with infectious diseases in both Cuba and the Philippines, far apart geographically but both involved in the conflict. And it was during that time that Clara first came down with yellow fever. Interestingly enough, she was infected when she was in the Philippines. She was sick for about seven months and she had to recover through yellow fever. But she did recover. She did recover, but she had to go back home after that and yeah. rest. Committed to the battle against infectious disease, Clara Moss returned to service. Again, she contracted yellow fever and again, she recovered. She even wrote letters home to her mom to say, don't worry about me, mom. I am in good hands. They're taking great care of me. I've been bitten. I've recovered. I'm doing fine. Clara's next encounter with yellow fever would prove fatal. And though hard to imagine, it's an encounter that Clara sought out. Along with 18 others, she volunteered to be bitten by infected mosquitoes in exchange for $100. Why would someone volunteer to be infected with a disease like yellow fever that's proven to be lethal? I believe that Clara Louise Moss really felt that given the fact she was able to survive two times from being bitten by a mosquito, that she was going to be able to be part of the cure. For a time, it appeared Clara would live to celebrate her achievement. However, in August of 1901, her health took a turn. She had complained of terrible, terrible headaches. She had incredible muscle discomfort and pain and very intense high fever. Over a period of about a week, Clara's health deteriorated significantly. Aware that her chances of recovery had grown slim, 
she sent her mother a heartbreaking farewell letter, a portion of which is on display in the museum. And she says, goodbye, mother. Don't worry, God will take care of me in the Yellow Fever Hospital, the same as if I were at home. I will send you nearly all I can, so be good to yourself and to the little ones. You know I am the man of the family, but do pray for me. Clara Moss was just a few days shy of her 25th birthday when she lost her battle. Though undeniably tragic, Clara Moss did not die in vain. The research ultimately led to a vaccine for yellow fever, and it ended the practice of offering money as a way to solicit healthy volunteers for life-threatening experiments. Today, the Clara Moss Medical Center carries forward the legacy of Clara Moss actively, always thinking about her commitment to caring. We really are focused as Clara wanted to be focused on, preven on prevention mm -hmm. and making people well. I love that, a focus on wellness over illness. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's, that's what she died for. You know, there are so many niche histories that you can find right here in New Jersey. When I was creating Drive By History as a series, I was hoping that we'd be able to bring those histories to light. The Clara Moss story is a perfect example of what I was hoping we would find. As Clara Moss Medical Center looks to the future, there could be no one better to carry the torch forward than Mary Ellen Klein. Not only is she a rare woman chief executive, she's also a registered nurse, who was recently honored by Seton Hall's College of Nursing as a distinguished graduate. When Mary Ellen first became CEO in 2010, she tells us she couldn't wait to walk in the front door. And when she arrived, she was touched by the response of her staff. The medical staff responded that they were so happy that the hospital is named after a nurse, and now a nurse is running this hospital. Oh. All has come full circle at New Jersey's Clara Moss Medical Center, named for a great nurse who made history, and now run by a great nurse who's making history. See you next time.